Oh, hello there. Welcome to the Automotive Tail Studio. I'm John, and uh, today we're going to we're going to do something a little bit different. Normally, our content involves bringing people into the studio here to talk about their cars and their stories, or following build projects such as the T5 Rescue. But as uh, lockdown restrictions continue, we we're going to change tack a little bit and bring you something a little bit different. So today's video is going to feature one of the Automotive Tales fleet. We're going to look at the Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit. So we bought this 1981 example, very early model of the Silver Spirit actually, uh, back in 2019 to do the obligatory uh, Le Mans run. We decided we'd, we'd up the game slightly and take something kind of flashy, because why not? So we spent the pricely sum of £3,500 on what appeared to be the cheapest running solid Rolls-Royce in the country. The Spirit was bought sight unseen through Matthewson's auction house and uh, with bated breath we awaited it to arrive on the back of a low loader uh, only to find immediately uh, a few problems. Uh, so a bit of rust on one of the wings and uh, a very high idle that didn't seem to settle down. Turned out to be possibly some of the, the worst of the issues actually. She was generally quite a good car despite being an 81 and having spent a reasonable amount of her life outside it appeared to be a solid shell. We took this car to Le Mans in 2019. We found a few more problems along the way, mainly around the Citroen-based hydraulic system that the Rolls-Royce and Bentleys on the SZ chassis run. When we arrived back, we had to make a decision. Do we invest more money in this car and keep it running, or do we break it for parts because we would more or less break even on the value we paid for it? However, those few miles to Le Mans and back were enough to kind of seal the deal. We'd fallen in love with this car. There was no way we were going to get rid of it. As a result, it's now become a fairly permanent part of the Automotive Tales fleet. So, today, I'm going to take you to have a look at the car. Due to the coronavirus and lockdown restrictions, we haven't had really anywhere to take the car, with exception to a very brief period in summer 2020. So, the car's been sat mothballed for quite a period of time. Uh, so, today, we're going to do a cold start on a Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit from 1981. Let's see if it starts after nearly six months in hibernation. When I said we're going to do a cold start, I, uh, I wasn't kidding. It's decided to dump a load of snow on us today, so uh, we're really going to test and see whether this works. So here she is with the obligatory Hesketh Racing and Caffeine and Machine stickers. So first things first, I'm just going to pop the boots. Um, as with all these SZ cars, and I think the earlier Silver Shadows, um, I don't know if you can see, they have a little switch down here, so you can actually isolate the battery. Designed to be kept in storage over winter or for longer periods of time. So hopefully the battery being isolated has saved it. So let's see how we get on. Um, right, I'll just introduce you to the car. So as you can see, she's sort of piano black with this lovely gold pinstripe, which I believe is original. Uh, we found some photos of a car very similar to this. This was first registered in London, taken in London in late 1981, which we believe is this exact car, because the colour combination black with the gold stripes and the cream seats, only, I think they only made three or four in this combination in that first year of production. So uh, I'll add that to the video. Ooh, that's a good sign, lights are on. I'm not going to get in properly because I've got snowy boots. But... Welcome to Blenheim Palace on Wheels. So the, the interior of the car is pretty much untouched from when we bought it. Um, with the exception of maybe giving it a quick clean. We made one modification in the interior, which is down here. So this stereo here wasn't original. There was a CD player up here that looked a bit nasty. So we blanked that off with the obligatory Yorkshire flag to cover the screw hole. Uh, this is a Bluetooth radio. Uh, no CD player, but that's fine. AM, FM, Bluetooth. You can stick memory sticks and things in it. Um, and that's all run then from the centre console, which these will go up. You might just be able to make out a circle here. So she has a charging pad under here, so you can charge your phone wirelessly. One doesn't want cables making a mess of the interior of one's Rolls Royce. Uh, so that was done prior to going to Le Mans, just to give us a bit more practicality for the journey. Um, right, I'll show you the all-important bit. Don't you just love the thud? It makes a bit of a rattle because the window's down, but I'm just going to do that again. If 
very solid feeling. Right, the money shot. Well, actually, technically, the money shot is right here. The, the lady is still in the front. Spirit of Ecstasy, which is rare on a very cheap Rolls Royce, is still there. Probably worth more than the car, I imagine. So here is the monster. 6.75 litres of British engineering at its finest. Um, albeit it's probably based on American V8, I suspect. So this is an early one. So we've got twin SU carbs on here. So the first thing we're going to do before we turn the car over, I'm just going to check the floats on the carbs, make sure they've got plenty of lubrication in them. One of them does have a habit of using a little bit of oil, so just keep check on that. We're going to check the engine oil. Um, I'm not going to check the gearbox oil because it hasn't gone anywhere. Um, and it's a bit of a faff to get to. Uh, we're not going to drive it today because, well, because it's snowing. Um, so we're going to turn her over, let her run up to temperature, just to check everything is A-OK. -okay. So I'm going to put you down and I'm going to crack on with checking everything before we turn it over. OK, so to check the oil in the little dash pot here, what you have to do is pop that thread out. There you can see the little plunger. So we just drop that back in. You see how that drops down very, very slowly under its own weight? That means there's a fairly sufficient amount of oil in there. In fact, it might have a tad too much. Um, what you don't want is it to drop straight back in. So if it sits and floats for a second, then we're about all right to go. So I'll just clean some of the oil off that. And we'll go to the other side and check the oil. If anybody watching has noticed that the light under the bonnet has gone off, well, yes, you'd be correct. As I was fiddling around with the cameras, I didn't want to flatten the battery having all of the lights on. So I just re-isolated the battery to be sure. Oh, right. So possibly the world's longest dipstick, and I'm not talking about me. So she's not long since I had her service, and that's nice and golden. Slightly over max, but that's fine because it's been sitting for ages. So we're good. We'll just redip and check. Okay, in and back out. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, I think. We're ready to get it started. Right, here goes. So these have a very interesting early automatic choke. So there's no choke lever to pull out, but a good healthy squidge once, twice on the accelerator. So these have a strange uh, set of uh, key positions. So you can turn left, turn all the accessories on, but you have to have had it right first. Um, rather than stage one, stage two. So the first stage right is what they call run. So that fires everything up. You should be able to hear the fuel pump priming. That's enough for a first try. Squeeze, squeeze. Let's see if we've got the float chambers full now. Sounds like we haven't quite got the uh, fuel prime yet. Oh, very nearly. Okay, so we've got fuel pressure. It's alive! Once it built up pressure, it uh, seems fairly happy. Okay. So they're always a little bit tappy from, uh, from cold start. That soon goes away once it's warmed up. We've done some fairly reasonable mileage, so that might be a bit of wear in the valve train. Nothing to really worry about. So what's she on? 91,396. So you'll notice the idle seems very high. There's no rev counter on the car, because why would one be interested in anything so mundane as the engine RPM? We just wanted to go forward. Um, 
but that's the automatic choke. So it'll do that until it's warmed up. And do that today. I'm going to give it a minute or two to sit at high idle. And then to cancel the automatic choke. So if you leave it, it will sit there for a while. It'll sit there almost indefinitely, I think, at high idle. Uh, but according to the owner's manual, one quick squeeze of the accelerator pedal, a fairly aggressive squeeze, I think is the terminology they use. Um, and that will cancel off the automatic choke. I'm going to try and show you the mechanism, but I might not be able to see it on the camera. Um, so it's to do uh, with the flap here. You really can't see it very well, but essentially it's a bimetallic strip. And once it's warmed up, it releases a catch. And then as you rev it, that catch pops the other side of a little lobe uh, and allows the throttle to close all the way. And the idle drop right down. So I mentioned when I first got the car that it had a high idle problem. It turned out to be the automatic choke was just quite sticky. So we, uh, we had that serviced and now it, uh, it runs fine. Before it would take a good sort of 15, 20 minutes to have enough pressure in the biometallic strip and enough heat in the engine for it to actually knock off onto a low idle, which was very frustrating when you were doing a cold start. Um, you can see we've got plenty of oil pressure in this little band here. Let's, uh, let's see if it knocks off onto a quiet idle. There you go, the idle's come down a little bit. It's not quite ready to, uh, to drop onto a silent idle. Literally burning money, but it was a good idea to get this all nice and started. So you can see in the back of the car, it's a very nice place to be, although I think the camera probably makes the seats look slightly better than they are. Uh, one of the projects I'm thinking of doing this year is try and get these seats out and give them a proper clean and a refurb. The leather's relatively supple. There's no sort of major cracks in it, but it's just starting to look a little bit tired, a bit dirty. So maybe we'll recolor them and give them some, uh, some feed and polish, make them look nice and shiny. Uh, also the veneer work on the rear mirrors here and on the other side here, if it'll swivel around, it's starting to look pretty ropey. So I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to get those out uh, and get them sent off. There's a couple of good companies in the UK that will refurbish those uh, and the same goes you can see on the walnut dash right over on the far side there the last little section to the left of the glove box where i'm pointing has also started to go where the rest of the dashboard looks okay and um, so we'll get that off and have that uh tasked up as well um the wood tops here seem to be quite different uh, but they're quite nice but they've, they've obviously not been done from the factory this has got some run of varnish on there so i might try and get those off as well send them off at the same time and see if they can be done in a similar material, get the same sort of luster that the dashboard has got. Isn't that just the ultimate in 80s? Look at those dials in the center of the dashboard. That kind of turquoisey blue eight segment digital dials, it's brilliant. Uh, although it's very optimistic, it says it's three degrees today. I think it's more like about zero. Well, you can hear she's quieting down a little bit, but she's still running at a fast idle. Uh, but she's been running more than long enough now. So we'll just give a quick squeeze of the throttle. And there you go. Drops down to a nice, quiet burble. Uh, this is a bit louder than your average uh, spirit. Uh, just before we went into lockdown at March 2020, uh, she went in for the MOT and they said the exhaust was shot. Um, so she's had a full stainless system from uh, Manifold back. So she's a little fruitier than your average. Um, but apparently they do quieten down once the exhausts are sooted up. Um, so it's not quite as loud as it is now, but it won't be as quiet as if it had the standard uh, mild steel system on it. Yeah, sounds nice. I'm gonna show you one of the cool little features of this car. So there is a button just down here called oil level. So if you look at the fuel gauge, uh, so you can see the fuel gauge, just about here. Um, but if you want to check what oil level you've got in the car, while it's either static or while it's driving, you hit that button and that gauge becomes an oil gauge. So this is telling me we're, we're about a third full of oil, which is fine because the engine's running now, so that's about where it should be. When it's off, it'll go much higher. We're starting to get a little bit of heat in the car. So 
certainly sounds well. Well, thank you for watching this uh, first episode and introduction to the Rolls Royce. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting. Uh, I'm recording this in advance, so I really hope it did start for you. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy what you see, then do please like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.